California has invested massively in battery energy storage and it's leaving rolling blackouts behind. Historically, blackouts in California were a big problem, just like they were in South Australia. That has come to an end. And it's really thanks to large batteries. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. And in California, well, for decades, rolling blackouts and urgent calls for energy conservation were part of life. People just got used to it, sort of. A reluctant summer ritual almost as reliable as the heat waves that drove them. But the state has undergone a quiet shift in recent years, and the California Independent System Operator hasn't issued a single one of those emergency pleas known as flex alerts since 2022. So what changed? Well, officials and experts say the Golden State has reached a turning point, a pivot point, reflecting years of investment in making its electrical grid stronger, cleaner, and more dependable. And that wasn't thanks to fossil fuels or nuclear. Much of this is new battery energy storage, which captures and stores electricity for later use. And it can react very quickly. In fact, battery storage can react as a peaker plant much quicker than gas peaker plants. And that's part of the problem, right? You know, you get those really hot days, people come home, and at some point, just too many air conditioners are turned on, right? And then the grid can't cope. It needs a peaker plant to jump in, and it's going to take a while for most peaker plants to actually get going. It actually isn't instant. Batteries, though, are instant peaker plants. In fact, batteries have been completely transformative for California, state officials say. In late afternoon, when the sun stops hitting solar panels and people are home using electricity, batteries now push stored solar energy into the grid. California has invested enormously in the technology, as I've reported on on this channel many, many times, helping it mature and get cheaper in recent years. Battery storage in the state has grown more than 3,000% in six years, from 500 megawatts in 2020 to more than 16,000 megawatts today. There is no question that the battery fleet has grown rapidly since 2020, along with the state's expanding portfolio of other supply and demand side resources, and these has been a real game changer for reliability during summer periods of peak demand, said Elliot Mainzer, CAISO's president and chief executive. Now, it was only five years ago that a record-shattering heat wave pushed the grid to its absolute limit and plunged much of the state into darkness. In the wake of that event, California's energy leaders vowed to take action to make the grid more resilient. At the time, guess what people said? They said California was being woke. Batteries were just woke. It didn't make sense. However, since then, CAISO has overseen a massive build-out of new energy and storage resources, including more than 26,000 megawatts of new capacity, which has also helped make the grid more stable. The state hasn't seen rolling blackouts now for five years. Extreme weather events, wildfires, and other emergencies can pose reliability challenges for any bulk electricity system, he said. Said officials from CAISO, but the CAISO battery fleet, along with the additional capacity and close coordination with state and regional partners, have provided an undisputable benefit to reliability. Now, we should also point out, it's not just state-owned batteries that are saving the grid in California. And it'll be a disservice for to be honest, California's government to claim that it is, which they kind of are. It's actually also EV owners. A lot of EV owners have power walls. A lot of EV owners have solar and power walls, and they charge their power walls during the day, and then they actually use their power walls on a vir in California's virtual power plants in order to, well, make money, but charge the grid during that evening peak. Batteries are now key to California's climate goals, including its mandate of 100% carbon neutrality by 20. 45. Already, batteries have enabled the grid to operate with dramatic decreases in the use of planet-warming fossil fuels. LATimes.com says that now they're becoming a more cost-effective and reliable replacement for aging gas-fired power plants, according to Maya Leroy, founder of the California energy consulting firm Loom Energy LLC and co-author of a recent report 
on the rise of battery storage over gas generation in California. Historically, flex alerts have always come through in summertime when it's super hot and everyone is cranking their AC, said Leroy. But also in the summertime, we're seeing that gas plants underperform because combustion doesn't work well with ambient heat. So when we're able to shift that need from having to use gas plants to something more stable, dispatchable, and flexible like battery storage, then we're able to meet the demand in summer without having to rely on those underperforming gas plants. Battery energy storage is not without challenges. Lithium ion batteries, the most common type used for energy storage, typically have around four to six hours of capacity. That's enough to support the grid during peak hours as the sun sets, but it can still leave some gaps to be filled by natural gas. Well, at the moment, of course, that will change in the future. Nikhil Kumar, Program Director with the Energy Policy Nonprofit Grid Lab, said the technology already exists for longer duration batteries, including through different chemistries, such as iron air batteries, which actually release energy through oxidation and flow batteries, which store energy in liquid chemicals that flow through a reactor. However, in many places around the world, there's actually now eight hour lithium ion batteries being built. So that is also coming. But these new battery technologies that I just talked about are not yet as mature as lithium ion phosphate and can be more expensive and larger than their lithium ion counterparts, counterparts, said Kumar. But a recent Grid Lab report re indicates that equation is actually changing. With the average cost of a new gas plant often on par with four hour lithium ion batteries and only slightly less expensive than longer duration battery technologies, batteries are going to get cheaper. Gas is not, said Kumar. The battery storage shift is occurring as the Trump administration takes steps to stifle solar and other forms of renewable energy in favor of fossil fuels such as oil, gas, and coal. At the end of September, the administration announced that it would open 13 million acres of federal lands for coal mining, 13 million acres for coal mining, and provide $625 million to recommission or modernize aging and really old coal-fired power plants that are often breaking down, which officials say will help strengthen the economy, protect jobs, and advance American energy, which obviously is uh, staggering in its depth of misinformation. During an hour-long news conference on the initiative, Interior Secretary Doug Burgum described wind and solar energy as intermittent sources that are literally dependent on the weather. But neither he nor any official mentioned the growth of battery storage that has made those sources much more reliable and clearly the obvious solution for America. It's not a partisan issue. ERCOT, which operates Texas's electrical grid, has more than 14,000 megawatts of batteries online, a nearly threefold increase from early 2023. California and Texas are constantly trading places as the top state for battery storage. And that's not because of being woke. I don't think Texas has ever been accused of being woke. Trump has made moves to support the production of batteries in the US, sort of. Currently about three quarters of the world's batteries are made in China and Trump's tariffs, including a proposed 100% tariff on Chinese batteries, have been good for at least one Sacramento-based battery manufacturer called Sparks. The administration wants critical material manufacturing to happen in the US, said Sanjeev Malhotra, founder and chief executive of the company. They basically are very much in favor of domestic manufacturing of batteries. Sparks is making lithium ion batteries that don't use nickel and cobalt, a composition that has long been an industry darling, but that depends on imported metals. Instead, new, more affordable, and longer lasting lithium ion phosphate batteries have a supply chain that is entirely based in the US, which means they can take advantage of federal tax credits that favor the production of clean energy components made mostly of domestic parts, said Malhotra. The company's clients include data centers and utilities. Malhotra added that California has done an excellent job beefing up the grid's storage capacity in the last few years. He said batteries are a major reason why the state hasn't seen a flex alert since 2022. The numbers basically tell the story that it was all because of essentially 
energy storage, he said. There is still work to do in California. While the state's grid has seen big improvements, it is more than a century old and was built primarily for gas plants. Experts and officials agree that it needs additional substantial upgrades and reforms to meet current energy demands and goals. And of course, future energy demands from AI data centers. Permitting is also a hurdle, as California typically requires lengthy environmental reviews for new projects. There is a lot of red tape and bureaucracy in California. The state, sometimes controversially, is now speeding reviews and recently approved a massive solar and battery storage farm. The Darden Clean Energy Project in Fresno County through a new fast-track permitting program. It will make enough electricity to power 850,000 homes for four hours, according to the California Energy Commission. Safety, though, is a concern in California because in January, a fire tore through one of the world's largest battery storage facilities in Moss Landing. Now, these batteries were not lithium ion phosphate. They were NMC batteries, which are more flammable in a fire situation. But there is a solution to this. Now, the facility housed around 100,000 lithium ion batteries, which are exceptionally dangerous when ignited because they burn extremely hot and cannot be extinguished with water quickly, which can trigger a chemical reaction. The blaze emitted dangerous levels of nickel, cobalt, and manganese that were measured within miles of the site. When you're dealing with large technologies in general, there's always going to be some kind of danger, said Leroy of Lumenergy. This points to the big need for diversifying the technologies that we use. Now, what does that mean? Well, the future of batteries is probably not likely to be NMC batteries with nickel, manganese, and cobalt, which can obviously cause toxicity in the air. And these batteries don't last as long anyways, lithium ion phosphate or sodium ion batteries, plus they're more expensive. So the future of America's battery industry is likely to change drastically as the emergence of affordable, longer lasting and safer sodium ion batteries and lithium ion phosphate batteries continues to increase in America's battery supply chain. Other forms of energy such as oil and coal also pose considerable health and safety risks, including the constant emission of air pollution, soot, mercury, nitrogen dioxide, and carbon dioxide contributing to climate change and to the loss of human health. California is in the process of eliminating coal power and expects to be completely coal free by November of this year. While natural gas still makes up a large piece of the state's portfolio, renewables represented nearly 60% of California's in-state electricity generation in 2024, with that number increasing in 2025. The numbers continue to trend upward. In the first six months of this year, CAISO's grid was powered by 100% clean energy for an average of seven hours every day. We have literally just demonstrated that California is able to run with super clean resources for, with backups from natural gas, said Kumar. And it works. We don't have flex alerts. California is clearly on track, along with Texas, to hit 100% renewables. Now, will it happen this decade? Probably not, but it is inevitable that it will happen at some point soon. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thanks for watching.